Hello, fifth graders. This is Mrs. Burke here with another um, quick strategy lesson for you. Today, we're going to look at how we can add and subtract to mixed numbers. Today's lesson will not involve any renaming or regrouping, but um, it's just going to be the basic adding and subtracting. Next lesson I send you will focus more on when we have to rename these um, numbers. So, to start, what is a mixed number? A mixed number is when you have a whole number and a fraction. For example, five is a whole number, one half is a fraction, five and a half is a mixed number. It's a mixture of a whole number with a fraction. So today we're gonna practice adding some first, and then we'll do some subtracting. Luckily, it's the same steps, except sometimes you're gonna add them, sometimes you'll subtract them. So let's start with this question. And also it's gonna be helpful if you have a paper and a pencil. At first, I'll just do a bunch of examples for you, but eventually you're gonna try some on your own. So that's when the paper and pencil or the whiteboard would be good to have. So we're starting with six and two fourths, and they want us to add three and one third. So the best thing to do is first, find a common denominator. I cannot add fractions that have different denominators. So I need to rename these fractions by giving them a common denominator. Quick reminder, your teachers have probably showed you multiple strategies for doing this. I'm gonna um, work with one strategy that I like the best. So we have fourths and thirds. I'm gonna write down my multiples of four. And then I'm going to write down my multiples of three, starting with four and three. So four, eight, 12, 16. And then for three, I have three, six, nine, 12. And I'm going to do a quick check to see if I have any multiples that are in common. And I do. I have my 12s, which means 12 is going to be my new denominator that I'm going to use. So. I always like to rewrite the original fraction or mixed number. So it was six and two fourths. I'm gonna change this to six, but now my denominator is gonna be a 12. So I'm gonna ask myself, I started with a denominator of four. What did I have to do to that denominator to turn it into a 12? I had to multiply this by three. Now the big rule with fractions is whatever you do to your numerator, you have to do to your denominator if you want it to keep the same value. So now I'm gonna take my numerator two and I'm gonna multiply it by that three again. And my new numerator is going to be six. And just a quick check, two fourths is half, six twelfths is also half. So you know you made an equivalent fraction. So now I have six and six twelfths and I have to change my second fraction or mixed number. So my second mixed number was three and one third. I'm gonna change, leave the whole number, but change my thirds into twelfths. What did I do to my denominator of three to turn it into a 12? Three, if you come back up here, three times one, two, three, four, gave me 12. Now I'm gonna multiply one, because that's my numerator, times four, and I'm gonna get four. So my new fractions, they're equivalent. So the value of these numbers doesn't change. I have six and six twelfths plus three and four twelfths. And now I'm gonna add them. I like to always add my fractions first. Six twelfths plus four twelfths equals 10 twelfths. And then six holes plus three holes equals nine holes, so nine and 12, 10 twelfths. But I know I can divide both of these numbers by two, so I'm gonna simplify. If I divide 10 into two, I get five, and 12 into two, I get six. So nine and 10 twelfths, or simplified, nine and five, six. Let's try another one. So my next one, I'm going to have two and a half, and I'm gonna add two and a third. 
So I don't have a common denominator, which means I have to make one. So I'm gonna find something that these two denominators have in common. So I'm gonna find my multiple totals of two and my multiples of three. So I have two, four, six, eight, three, six, nine, 12. And again, I have something in common, my six. So I'm gonna rewrite my two fractions, two and a half, and two and a third. And now I'm gonna make equivalent fractions with them. So I still have my two wholes, but I'm changing my half denominator into six. What did I do to my two to make it a six? I multiplied by three. So now I'm gonna take my numerator and multiply that by three. One times three is three. So two and a half is equivalent to two and three six. Move along to my second fraction, two and a third. I want to change it into six. What did I do to my denominator of three to make it a six? I multiplied it by two. So now I'm going to do the same thing to my numerator. One times two is two. So now I want to add my fractions first. These are my two new fractions that are equivalent to, equivalent to the original fraction or mixed number. 2 and 3, 6, plus 2 and 2, 6. All right, 3, 6 plus 2, 6 is 5, 6. 2 plus 2 is 4. And that is already simplified. So they don't have any common factors I could divide both by. So my answer is 4 and 5, 6. Why don't you give some a try now? Here's one for you. 2 and 2 thirds plus 4 and 1 sixth. So you should be looking at your denominators, thinking about which multiples they both have and what is the common multiple that you could change the denominators to. Whatever you do to your numerator or your denominator, you then have to do to your numerator. All right, so let's try this. If you need more time, you can press pause and just resume it when you're caught up. So we have two and two thirds plus four and one six. I'm gonna look for my multiples of three and six. Three, six, nine, 12. Six, 12, 18, 24. They have two that are in common, but I'm gonna pick the least common multiple. <coughs> Excuse me, tickle on my throat. Six. So now, let me give myself some more room. Two and two thirds is equivalent to two and how many six? Well, I used to have a denominator of three. I multiplied it by two to make it six. So now I'm gonna multiply my numerator by two and it becomes a four. Then I had four and one sixth becomes four. And look at this, it's already six. I'm not gonna have to change a single thing, but you might've said to yourself, what did I do to my denominator to keep it a six? multiplied it by one, so one times one is one. So that hasn't changed because it was already six. So now let me add, four six plus one six equals five six. Two plus four is six. So my final answer would be six and five six. Hopefully you got that also. If you didn't, hopefully you see where your mistake was. All right, so let's shift gears and move into subtracting. It is the same first steps. You're gonna look for a common denominator and then you're gonna make equivalent fractions. And once you do, instead of adding them, you're gonna subtract them, all right? So here we go. Two and seven eighths minus one and three fourths. I have eighths and fourths, which are not common. So I'll find common denominators. I have four multiples of four, multiples of eight, four, eight, 
12, 16. I usually do the first four multiples. 8, 16, 24, 32. I can see that they both have the 8 there. They also both have the 16, but the 8 is the least common multiple, so I'm going to use that one. So I have 2 and 7 eighths. I want to change them both to eighths. Well, guess what? This one was already eighths. You don't have to change a thing. It's going to stay two and seven eighths. Then I had one and three fourths. I need to change this to eighths. I'm still going to have one whole. Let's see how many eighths. I had a denominator of four. To turn it into an eight, I multiplied by two. So I have to multiply my numerator by two. Three times two is six. Now, before we were adding together, now since it's a subtraction, I'm going to subtract my answers. 7 eighths minus 6 eighths equals 1 eighth. 2 wholes minus 1 whole equals 1 whole. So my final answer is 1 and 1 eighth. Let's try one more. Drop my erasers. Okay. Next one's going to be 10 and 8 twelfths minus 4 and a half. I don't have a common denominator, so I'm going to find one by listing the multiples. I had twelfths and halves. 12, 24, 36, 48, 2, 4, 6, 8. So far, I don't have a common multiple. Let me keep going. 10, 12. There we go. So I can use 12 to find equivalent fractions. So I have 10 and 8 twelfths. I want to change them both to 12. Luckily, this already is 12, so it can stay exactly the same, or times 1 times 1. Now I have 4 and a half. I'm going to make an equivalent fraction using 12. What did I do to my halves to turn them into 12? 2 times 6. Look, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 times 6, which means I have to now multiply my numerator by 6. 1 times 6 is 6, and you should recognize that 1 half and 6 twelfths are equivalent. I have my new fractions. Time to subtract them. 8 twelfths minus 6 twelfths is going to give me 2 twelfths. 10 holes minus 4 holes, right? is going to give me six holes. So I have six and two twelfths, but I recognize I can divide both of these by two to give me six and one six as my final answer. All right, now it's gonna be your turn for a subtraction one. Take your time with this. Look for your common denominator. And whatever you do to your denominator, you must do to your numerator. Here we go. Eight and a half minus six and two fifths. Okay. So hopefully you found your multiples of 2 and your multiples of 5, and you saw that they have a common multiple of 10. So I'm going to take my original fractions, and I'm going to make equivalent fractions using tenths. 8 and a half is equivalent to 8 and how many tenths? To get my denominator of 2 to become a 10, I had to multiply by 5. So I'm going to do that to my numerator. 1 times 5 is 5. Half is equivalent to 5 tenths. Next, two-fifths. I'm keeping my whole number, but I'm turning my fraction into tenths now. Five times two gave me my tenths, so two times two is going to give me four-tenths. I have my two fractions, eight and five-tenths and six and four-tenths. I'm going to subtract them. Five-tenths minus four-tenths equals one-tenth. And notice my denominator does not get subtracted. It's staying the same unit, tenths. And then finally, eight holes minus six holes two holes. So I have a final answer of two and one tenth. Hopefully you were able to get the same. 
All right, so that is how we subtract and add mixed numbers when we're not required to rename them. So that will be the next lesson, which is a couple of extra steps, but you'll, you'll get it no problem. Um, so refer to these videos and lessons whenever you're stuck or you need a quick refresher. I hope they're helpful. I miss you guys a ton and I cannot wait to see you again, but I hope you're having a great week and happy spirit week. See you soon. Bye.